in this lesson, we are going to look at how to factorize cubic equations. And the way that we're going to do that is by guessing the first root. Now that might not make sense right now, but as we go along, I'll show you what we mean. So in the in previous lessons, I have showed you um, how to factorize cubics or things that have four terms. And what we typically did was we did grouping. But what you would realize with this one is that grouping is not going to work. Like you can try group those two. Yes, there's a common factor, but it won't be the same as when you group those two. So there's no way that you could group. So what you are going to do here instead is I want you to look at this number. And I want you to think about all of the factors of that number. So that number, uh, one of the factors is 7, and the other one is 1. And it could be plus or minus 7 and plus or minus 1. So what I want you to then do is I want you to plug these numbers into the places of x, and you keep going until you get a 0. So I like to start with 1. So I'm going to plug 1 into the place of x. And if you had to go work that out, you get negative 24, so that is not a factor. Then you're going to plug in the number minus 1. Now, because it's a negative, we must use a bracket. And if we had to go work this out, we get 0. Now, that's what you want. Okay, so you got 0. Now, what you're going to do next is you're going to take that minus 1, okay? So you're going to take that minus 1, and you're going to do synthetic division on this. Okay, remember the lesson where we spoke about synthetic division? If not, go check that out quickly um, and then come back here. Uh, because what we're pretty much doing is we're dividing this now by this factor over here. And so remember the way synthetic division works? You bring this one down and then you're going to multiply these two together, which is negative one. Then you're going to add these together, which is negative six. And then you're going to multiply these together, which is positive six. And then you're going to get negative seven. And then you're going to multiply these two together, which is positive 7. And then you're going to add these, and you're going to get 0. Now remember, this was your x cubed, this was your x squared, this was your x, and then this was your normal number. Now with synthetic division, you divide, you drop each of those. So this becomes x2, the next one becomes x, and then the next one's just the number. So it's x squared, take away 6, take away 7. What I then want you to do is to take this part over here now and factorize that. So you're going to factorize that, because that's just a trinomial. And so you would take the number 7, and we know that this is just trinomial now, so we know that 7 is the same as 7 times 1. Now, if you could take that 7 and that 1, and you could make minus 6, how would you do that? Well, it would be negative 7, positive 1. So you would say negative 7, positive 1. And then you'd have x and x. And then make that equal to 0 because we're busy with an equation. And so if you had to solve, you'd say that x minus 7 is equal to 0, or x plus 1 is equal to 0. So that means x would be 7, or x would be equal to negative 1, or x would be this first answer that we got earlier, but that's also negative 1. So you can just write it again, I guess. Um, so there's our three answers, because remember, we're supposed to get three answers. So here's our next example. So remember, grouping isn't going to work. Um, if it did work, then you could have used that. But these examples, the grouping won't work. So what we're going to do is you take the factors of this number. So that would be 1 and 13, and then use the positive and the negative of each one. So what I want you to do is start with positive 1, OK? Go plug that into the places of x. So 1. And we, we're hoping to get an answer of 0. And that does not give us 0. That gives us negative 48. So then try negative 1. And if you had to go work out this, you get 0. OK, that's fantastic. So then you're going to use synthetic division with that negative 1. So you're going to put the negative 1 over here, and then all of these numbers of here, so 1, negative 11, negative 25. Let me make a bit more space, like that. Then what you do is you bring this 1 down. OK, and now you multiply. So that's going to give you um, negative 1. And then you add these together. That's going to give us negative 12. Then you multiply these two together, which is going to be positive 12. You add these together, which is negative 13. Then you multiply these together, which is positive 13. 
and then you add these numbers together, which is zero. Now remember, this was your x3, this was your x squared, this was your x. So now you drop that to x squared and x. So you have x squared, take away 12x, take away 13. Then what I want you to do is just go factorize that. So that's just a normal trinomial. So you look at the factors of 13, which is one times 13. Now, if you use one and 13, how could you make negative 12? Well, you could say negative 13 plus one. So you open up two brackets and you say negative 13 plus one, put a X, put a X. And then if you had to solve, you'd say X minus 13 equals to zero or X plus one equals to zero. And so then you can solve and you'd get x is equal to 13 or x would be negative one. And then your other answer would also be this one over here. So that's x equals to negative one. So there you're getting your three answers again, okay? Now for this example, you could go use the technique that I showed you, um, but grouping would actually also work with this one. So in fact, if you wanna try grouping, that's fine, you can do it, but I'm rather gonna to stick to the technique that I showed you in this video, because that's what this video is all about. Um, but this one could be grouped if you wanted to. For example, you could uh, group those two together, okay? So you'd have x3 take away x, um, and then you could also group uh, these two together. Now you can go try that out for yourself, but I'm not gonna use the grouping method in this one. I'm rather gonna stick to the technique that I've been showing you. So what we do is we always look at this number, the coefficient, which is the number without the variable, and you look at its factors. So that could be positive or negative one, and positive or negative three. I'm gonna start with the positive one, okay? So I'm gonna go plug that into all of the x's places. And that's gonna give us one plus three, take away one, take away three, which is zero. Okay, so that's a good thing. So then you use the synthetic division with that number. So you do that, and then you've got one, and then a three, a negative one, and a negative three. Okay, so you bring this one down, and so one times one is one, and then you add these, so that gives you four. Then you say one times four, which is four, and then you add these, which is three. Then you say one times three, which is three, and then you add them, which is zero. And then remember, this one then become x squared, this one will become x, and this would just be a number. So then what we have is x squared, add four x, add three, equals to zero, that's a trinomial. So you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna look at three, which is the same as one times three. Then you're gonna take that one and that three and you're gonna make a four. And you would do that by making two brackets, and then you'd say x plus one, and x plus three. And so if you had to solve that, you would say x plus one equals to zero, or x plus three equals to zero. And so x would be negative one, or x would be negative three. And then your other answer would be this one here. So you'd say, or x is equal to one. 